Today is LeBron James' 34th birthday. I know he got off to a early birthday uh, celebration during a glass of wine the other day. <laughs> but right now, I know LeBron James, although, you know, he's going to uh, celebrate the day with his family and friends. Uh, the Lakers organization right now should be very concerned, not necessarily about LeBron James. Uh, the injury that he suffered is not a serious one. Um, what he should be concerned about and what the Lakers organization should be concerned about, and Ticket TV talked about this uh, to an extent on his channel, is the Lakers don't really have a lot of room for error. You know, I... I pretty much thought that if the Lakers had continued the way that they were progressing and if Rondo and James basically played the rest of the games, that they would have been a 47-48 win team. Just enough to get into the playoffs, in my opinion. But to go without LeBron James until maybe the first week of January and lose some crucial games and their schedule gets harder, and to go without Rondo for another month, I don't know about them making the playoffs. I don't think they will. It'll take a, it'll take a miracle, in all honesty. And that's why I'm hard on Lonzo Ball. Uh, because, you know what? I'm going to tell you something, too. I got to go on a little rant about something. I'm really sick of this term, hating. What is that? You know, I, I don't really understand. And, th and this is why, this is why, and I, and I hate to go there, this is why a lot of people feel like the younger generation is soft. Because when I was growing up, what people call hating, what people call hating, we called hearing the truth. We called it constructive criticism. We called it keeping it real. You know, um, and also you can't be a hypocrite on what's keeping it real and what's hating. Just because you don't like what the person, what the messenger is saying, you call it hating. But when you like what, what the messenger is saying, then you call it keeping it real. But look, if anybody's to blame in this situation, man, it's this goddamn daddy, man, you know, his daddy told all of us that this guy, this this guy, Lonzo, was better than Stephen Curry. You know what I'm saying? That he was, uh, he would beat Michael Jordan and all this type shit, a one-on-one, or, or whatever. I can't remember whether he, Lonzo said he, uh, whether he said Lonzo would beat Michael Jordan or whether LeVar said he beat Michael Whatever, it doesn't make any difference. All of his braggadocio, all of his hyperbole, Led to all this media attention, okay? Very high draft pick by the Lakers. When you talk all that shit and you create all these expectations, people expect something, all right? That's like a guy bragging to a woman, you know, about his size and how good he is in bed and... She gonna have all these fucking orgasms, and she he's he she he, he's basically begging for the pussy, talking all this shit, and then when she finally gives it to him, he sucks. Don't be surprised if this woman shits all over you to her friends, and in this day and age, on fucking internet, on the internet. Don't get mad then, because you deliver the expectations. You shouldn't have talked so much shit. As opposed to if you're a guy like, hey, I ain't going to lie to you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, you know, the greatest lover in the world, but, hey, you know what I'm saying? Don't expect too much, you know, blah, blah, blah. And if she gives it to you and you're a little better than she, you know, than she expected, then she's pleasantly surprised. See, if Lonzo Ball was projected to be an average player and that's what we were getting, mediocrity, and, 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 and uh, you know, and a 
a standard NBA career, then people wouldn't be so hard on him. But it's his father. Okay? His father's to blame for all of this shit. So right now, without their two best players in the, in the rotation, Lonzo Ball has to step up. In my opinion. He has to step up. Somebody has to step up. And whoever steps up is going to be the perceived uh, second or third best player on the team. Me personally, I don't think Lonzo Ball has it in him. I don't think he has that leadership ability. You know, he he comes across as kind of... I don't know. He, he just doesn't come across as an alpha alpha male type guy. He comes across as a guy that's easily intimidated at times and likes to get along, to, you know, get along with people and shit, you know. But I'm not saying that he, he's an awful NBA player. He's not awful, but he's not great either, you know. But the Lakers have a lot of, you know, hard games coming up, man. I I think they play the uh, Thunder on the second. And then there's like a lot of teams that they're playing against that they could easily lose to. I could also see the Lakers easily losing to a bunch of teams that they should lose to. I mean, should be. I think I saw the Bulls. Watch, Watch, I guarantee you, the Lakers somehow fucking lose to the Bulls. If Lon, if uh, Lebr- LeBron isn't back by then, I can just sense they're gonna lose their fucking team. You know what I'm saying? Like, youth is a good thing at times. You know, uh, inspired young players can sometimes win a game just going against a bunch of guys, especially. If, uh, if you're going against a veteran team that's played back to back and their legs are tired, sometimes young, youth is a good thing. But a lot of times, most of the times, having a team uh, with a bunch of young guys in the long run, it doesn't work very well. Um, you got a lot of guys who have egos nowadays. You got guys that are trying to establish themselves. On that team right now, you don't really have... It's like a rudderless ship right now without LeBron James or even Rondo there. It's a rudderless ship, and no one's there to steer the damn thing. And someone has to step up. And right now, um, the way things are going, I don't even know if the Lakers are going to win 41 games. LeBron James can only do but so much. And I'm of the opinion that LeBron James is in the latter stages of his career. And this year, you know what I mean? Like, there's only but so much room, like I said earlier, room for earth for the Lakers. And um, they don't really have anybody, man. Like, you know, uh, Kyle Kuzma, to me, has emerged as offensively the second best player. Um, I think that the Lakers need to make a run for somebody after this year. Um, even if it, Even if it leads to them having to get rid of guys like... Uh, Ingram, even ball to get a quality uh, all star or really a quality superstar, second second superstar, then so be it. But right now the Lakers, it just doesn't look good, man. I don't know, man. But hopefully LeBron James will be back like what? um, What are they saying? Like two weeks maybe? Two weeks he'll be back? That's a long little stretch, man. It's like probably like what? uh, 
five more games, maybe six more games. The Lakers don't really, like I said, they, they really cannot afford to lose some of these gimmies. They lost a lot of games earlier this year than they should have won down the stretch. And uh, some of it, a little bit, is LeBron's fault for missing free throws and shit, man. But for the most part, you know what I'm saying, with a guy of LeBron James's uh, caliber, there's been some games LeBron James won on his own. You know, that's how great a player he is. But now you don't have that. Now you don't have a guy that can control the tempo of the game, that can control an offense like Rondo, run the offense. You don't have that. So, I don't know, man. But uh, tell me what you guys think, man.